Hi, I'm Tannic Sims 2, but you can call me Tanny. And aside from her identity crisis, Mary Mellons is a pretty interesting character who doesn't seem to get a lot of attention. So let's change that and discover who the heck is Mary Mellons anyway. Mary Mellons was the maternal grandmother of General Buzz Grunt and great grandmother of Tank, Rip, and Buck Grunt, though without mods, the vanilla game does not actually recognise great-grandparents. At the start of the Strange Town storyline, Mary is already deceased, and she does not appear in her grandson's memories. This could imply she died before he was born, but most base game sims only have memories of their parents dying, and very few remember grandparents dying. She also knows and has relationship values with Buzz, so it is likely that the developers just decided to omit memories of her because she wasn't relevant to Buzz's story. Despite her place at the very top of the Grunt family tree and lack of gravestone, Simpie flags Mary as only being unlinked, hence the blue background in her portrait. According to Chris Hatch, who has updated tools such as Simpie and her checker, Simpie and the game have different interpretations of unlinked, so he recommends using this information more as a guide than anything definitive. Essentially though, Mary being flagged as unlinked by Simpie means she is hidden from view in the game except where it matters, such as providing her portrait in the family tree as well as preserving her NID and sim description record. While this is also the case for ancestors who are marked as having no character data in Simpie, the difference is that, theoretically speaking, Mary's data could be recoverable enough to make her playable. That being said, I'm hesitant to deem Mary as having completely intact character data or being safe to resurrect at all, mostly based on the fact that Chris Hatch told one player that a sim with the object type of 11, unknown, is a write-off, and this is the exact type Mary is listed as being in her object data. In order to resurrect Mary through in-game means such as the resurrect anomatron, players will have to first change her object object type to 2 or person and relink her using SimPE. So while her character data was not deleted in development like most base game ancestors and she appears to be in better shape than some ancestors with graves, Mary definitely was never intended to be resurrected or played with at all. There were no means to resurrect Sims in game until the first expansion pack University, so while Mary can be fixed enough externally to resurrect her in game, it's safe to assume Maxis weren't counting on anyone making her playable, regardless of her undeleted character data. So there's no doubt that Miss Melons here was definitely never supposed to be played, but that doesn't mean she can't have a bit of lore, you know? just as a treat. Some unplayable ancestors have memories, whether intentional or not, some wear accessories and makeup and have customised appearances, and some, or quite a few really, have punny names. So care did go into making these sims who essentially are just portraits in a family tree or some living sims memories, and that care is exactly what we should talk about for the next parts of this video, once we address the elephant in the room, of course. Sorry, quick side note because this has been bothering me and I'm hoping to rectify this in more depth with an upcoming video about buggy memories, but in the past I have erroneously referred to sims file names as NIDs. NIDs, or neighbour IDs, according to the game code, correlate with the hexadecimal instance number of a sims sim description record. I'm so sorry for this mistake and I will try my best to be more careful from now on. Since I have already covered covered this in both the first part of the Strange Town video and the recent video about Pascal and Laszlo, I will try to keep this brief. I do just want to bring it up again though, since it feels you can't talk about Mary without this curious detail. Mary Mellons is perhaps best known for the possibility that she may have taken the NID that once belonged to an original version of Pascal Curious, who may have been improperly deleted sometime in development. 
software developer April Black, who's doing some pretty cool research into the technical side of sim deletion, commented on my video about Pascal and Laszlo and shared their thoughts and theories as to what may have happened based on their own discoveries and understanding of the game's code. The following information comes from both their comment and their thread on Mob the Sims, so all credit goes to April. Generally, sims created together in Creator Sim will be assigned consecutive NIDs. When sorted by instance number or NID, Mary is directly above Vidkund, just one number below his. Meaning she, or perhaps more accurately, the original owner of the Strangetown NID 2A or 42 in decimal, would have been created right before Vidkund. This lines up with Pascal being the eldest curious brother. As Mary is a long dead ancestor, it is odd that she seemingly was created at the same time as her living relatives, if not even before their creation, since pre-made ancestors are typically created after living sims, with only a few exceptions. And so it is more likely that, when she was created along with the other Strangetown ancestors, she took both a random, unpascalian deleted sims user file name, as well as a not so random, pascalian deleted sims nid, since these two id numbers are separate from one another. Perhaps a sim creation index, which can usually remember nids being used before even in the case of total neighbourhood annihilation, may have have reset somehow around the time Mary was created, leading to her unintentionally taking this number and any leftover data still attached to it. The most convincing evidence indicating Mary snapped up Pascal Curious the first NID lies within her curious relationships. Relationships between sims are linked using NIDs, and they seem to be one of the many records that aren't properly purged when a sim is improperly deleted, such as through deleting character files in the neighbourhood folder or using the delete all characters cheat. If it is true that Mary has indeed unethically inherited Pascal Senior's NID, then it could explain some pretty odd relationships between Mary and other the residents of Strangetown, ones whom, realistically, Mary should not even know on account of, well, death. Aside from her correct, or almost correct, ties to the Grunt descendants, Mary seems to recognise Vidkun Curious as her brother, Jenny Smith's children as her niece and nephew, although the sibling relationship with Pascal should be older sister Jenny is not reciprocated by Mary. She also sees Glan and Kitty Curious as her parents, as well as the earlier Curious and Hogleg ancestors as her grandparents. These flags are mutual. These relationships are not reflected in the neighbourhood's family ties resource, so they shouldn't have any impact in the game. None of these relationships make sense. The Grunt family are, of course, not related to the Curious Smiths. That family tree is convoluted enough, thank you. However, these relationships are consistent with Pascal Curious, right down to her mutual enemyship with Loki Beaker, and even a friendship with hidden nervous subjects. This original Nervous was most likely deleted and then recreated at the last minute, so it would make sense that original Pascal would have known Nervous number one before being condemned to a fate worse than a satellite crush. Okay, that absolutely was not brief, so I apologise for that. <laughs> Thank you again to April Black for your incredible work and for blessing this community with your knowledge. Now it's definitely time to move away from any too technical and head deeper down the lore path of Mary Mellon's character so we can get one step closer to finally figuring out who she is. When climbing the Grunt family tree, the first thing a player may notice about Mary is that she does not share the same surname as Missy Grunt's father, Mike Steele. This could mean either Mary and Mike never married, or that they were once married and eventually divorced at some point, possibly paralleling the fate of Mary's grandson's marriage. Either way, Mary and Mike having different surnames was most likely a purposeful choice, as well 
well as storing a sim's name and biography or an object's description in buy or build mode, the developers seem to have also used the catalog description resource to leave notes for translators. For example, the object Puddle has a note stressing that its name must remain in lowercase because it is intended to appear in text notifications. In Mary's catalogue description, there is a note that not only states Mary is the grandmother of General Buzz, but also reads, note that she does not have the same name as his grandfather. So Mary being melons rather than steel was intentional, but why does this matter? The prevailing theory appears to be that Mary and Mike simply never married. The Sims wiki supports this by suggesting their daughter was born as Missy Mellons, though this is difficult to verify because Missy ended up marrying General Chip Grunt and taking his surname. When a baby is born to unmarried parents in an unmodded game, the baby will always automatically take the mother's surname. So if it's true that Mary and Mike were not married, then Missy would have indeed been born Missy Melons. Of course, this isn't a big deal or anything, it's just rare for pre-maids in The Sims 2 to be considered illegitimate children. And if you remove The Sims who were the result of alien abduction or flirting with death, or Sims intended to be full aliens, you're left with just Missy as the only pre-made, albeit unplayable, Sim with unmarried parents. Perhaps Missy was the result of a one-time woohoo, although interestingly, Mike was a family sim. Mary and Mike's relationship becomes even more interesting then, purely based on the mechanics of the family aspiration and its tendency to roll power wants like getting married and having babies. Of course though, it's not like the developers painstakingly played through the ancestors' entire lives, like I thought they did when I was a kid, so Mike most likely never really got to fulfil any wants before his character data was deleted. And most of all, it doesn't mean all family sims absolutely must get married. Maybe Mary and Mike stayed together until the end but decided marriage wasn't for them. Though this isn't possible through normal gameplay, maybe they were married, and girl boss Mary kept her surname. However, another crucial piece of evidence that Mary and Mike were not married, or at least did not stay married, is that they are not linked together in the Grunt family tree. Ordinarily, when married sims die, the spouse flag is cleared and they will no longer be connected in the family tree. Pre-made ancestors, however, are still connected to one another, most likely intentionally so that players can get a sense of the family story. Living sim Dina Caliente, for example, is still connected to her late husband Michael Batchelor in her family tree, possibly to provide an explanation as to why his urn is just chilling in the Caliente's living room. It becomes a breadcrumb in Dina's story and adds to her mystery. This break in the Grunt family tree is certainly significant then. Since this is also the case for divorced sims who have children together, the theory that Mary and Mike were divorced is still plausible. However, in normal gameplay, sims always keep their married names after divorce, and sims names can only be changed with mods or fan-made external tools like SimPE. Of course, the developers would have had access to advanced debugging tools, and there are examples of sims like Dina whose names should be different according to normal gameplay, so this theory doesn't necessarily need to be ruled out just yet. So, we've discussed possible theories around Mary and Mike's relationship, but this is where things get weird because, well, there actually isn't a relationship between Mary and Mike at all. Despite having presumably been close enough to create a baby together, Mary and Mike do not have the known flag checked, nor do they have any relationship values towards one another. Essentially, they are strangers and have never met. 
This makes very little sense. Like we've covered, they were the parents of Missy Grunt, and in an unmodded game, Sims must be in love to, you know. The chances that this was just an oversight are incredibly likely. A lot of Sims, especially in Strangetown, are missing family ties and consistent relationships, and Mary and Mike could just be another example of this. Perhaps this lack of relationship could explain why they aren't connected in the family tree, though the emphasis on Mary's last name in her catalogue description suggests her not having the same surname as Mike was indeed intentional at the very least. If anyone's interested, my own personal headcanon is that Mary Mellons was sapphic, and Mike provided half of the ingredients necessary so Mary could raise a biological child either by herself or with a partner. Of course, this isn't at all possible without mods, but hey, neither's never returning from an alien abduction or Sims, uh, unaliving each other. Mary doesn't have a set gender preference and there is no proof of her having a partner other than Mike, so I am not at all implying this as canon or what the developers intended, it is simply how I like to explain the fact that Mary and Mike don't know one another, yet had a child together. Alternatively, maybe Mike was the one to raise Missy. He was a family sim after all, so perhaps he was the one who wanted a child to either raise by himself or with a partner, but just wasn't fussed on marriage. What is certain though is that Mary's story is completely up to a player's interpretation. Most pre-made ancestors don't have any memories, probably because they were not only never intended to be played, but also possibly due to the memory limitations for the base game. Sure, maybe if Mary and Mike and even Missy had memories chronicling their lives, we would have more definitive answers about their relationship and the Grunt family's history. But this lack of memories enables us players to create our own headcanons and stories. Essentially, Mary and many other sims are vessels for players' creativity. As for why such a long dead intended to be unplayable ancestor has so much opportunity for lore, well, it's not really all that surprising when you consider how family ties and trees were highly anticipated features for the sequel to one of the most popular PC games at the time. It makes sense that they would want to show off these new features' full capabilities. Familiar faces from The Sims 1 pop up in some pre-made Sims family trees and storytelling images, almost rewarding returning players. Other family trees reveal interesting details that may be relevant to some family stories, like the Caliente twins being a quarter alien. And most of all, developers were encouraging players to look at pre-made Sims family trees in the build-up to The Sims 2's release, so it doesn't seem to be completely far fetch to assume the developers may have wanted backstories even for unplayable ancestors. I've been asked before something along the lines of, who cares about the dead sims who were never meant to be played, and I guess I made this video as a really long-winded way of answering me, I care. I just think they're really neat, okay, and I'm going to squeeze them for every drop of lore I can get out of them. And for the reasons I've just listed, I'd argue the developers also cared about the dead sims. Besides, isn't it amazing how almost 20 years later, we're on a website that didn't even exist when The Sims 2 was released, discussing lore of an incredibly minor and unplayable character. To me, that is truly a testament to both the longevity of this game and to the intensity of the love and care that made this game as unmatched and irreplaceable as The Sims 2. Wow, hi, okay, so this took a lot longer than I had anticipated, so I am really sorry about that, but it is here now, just in time for Pride Month too, which is great, love that. So um, I'd really, really love to know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Tell us all about what you think, don't be shy, share your theories with the class please. I'll probably also be posting a poll on my community page once this video goes live, where you can vote for your favourite theory 
diary about Mary and Mike's relationship and possibly also in a few days I might post another poll asking who you would like to see covered next. Um, because I have some ideas for other sims I'd like to do the sort of deep dive style investigation on. Um, I would like this to become a series so I really really hope you enjoyed this sort of combination of lore and technical stuff. I had a lot of fun making it. I'm hoping to now finally begin actually recording the Blue Water Village video. The research stuff is mostly complete. Um, I'm sorry that one has been taking an extremely long time as well. Uh, a lot has happened in my life. I've been having a lot of personal problems, you know, both online and offline, but I have this incredible community on my side and that's what's important to me. I mean, there are now 4,000 of you, <laughs> which is terrifying, confusing, perplexing, but most of all just wow <laughs> that's so many people thank you all so much for your support and your patience over the past few months genuinely i cannot thank you all enough because honestly i never would have been able to get through everything without you so just you know thank you for watching thank you for subscribing thank you for everything truly <laughs> and yeah there is so much i want to say but i will let you go now i know i just said so many words just now but before you go i have have just a few more words to say and those are of course please remember to stay safe be good and most of all happy simming see you all next time hopefully <laughs> bye